Today's video is going to be about backgrounds in Pathfinder 2. We're going to go inside the thought bubble and really consider the various options against one another and look at where verisimilitude might be falling short and where there's some really exciting choices and options in front of your character. But first I want to talk about one particular background option, or rather just the idea that there are really good particular options in Pathfinder 2 and why I think that some of these choices are so much better than others. It's the concept of first order optimal strategies. They're things that jump out of the page at you in the Pathfinder 2 playtest book because they're really easy to make them work in almost all circumstances. This is the sort of thing like Chun-Li's rapid fire kicks and E Honda's rapid fire punches in the console gaming days of our childhood. If you went over to a friend's house, even if you didn't have a Sega Genesis, probably mash that button fast enough to do some damage and actually feel like you were participating. And by the same token, I think that that's a little bit of what's going on here. I first learned about the concept of first order optimal strategies, or FOOs, from extra credits a few years back. And they say there's nothing wrong with this concept. It does make games more accessible and it does give a new player who's wet behind the ears uh, a sensation that they can get into the game and be meaningful within the game's fiction. The trouble is that it starts to hurt verisimilitude if all the other options that are in the game aren't all that effective if they can't find their voice, those other choices that take more effort or are a little more specific. And the second pitfall of foos is that because other strategies besides foos take more effort, if those strategies aren't able to really feel elevated, like they're rewarding a player for the extra effort they've made in mastering something which is more complex, then it belies a sensation of shallowness that, you know, even if you do try to go deeper, the thing that's right there on the surface is always going to be the biggest thing on the block. Now, I don't think that that's necessarily the case here in Pathfinder 2, but I think that we need to look closely. So what are the three foos that I think in the character creation options are really jumping out at me. Now last time I said we were going to look at ancestry feats for the elves and the nimble feat as compared to all the other ancestry feats in the game is definitely a foo because it's always on, it's always good, it always works and the other things are more specific and they're harder to make them work for you. They take more hustle and in some cases that makes the feeling that races besides elves might be a little bit challenged. The second foo that I want to point out is that humans are bonkers good. They have the ability to access additional class feats, additional general feats at first level, whereas other characters have to wait until further down the line in order to really start deploying their build. So by spending their ancestry feat they can access these higher tiers of feat powers at first level. Nothing necessarily wrong with that, and if you consider the vision advantage that humans lack, they don't have dark vision, they don't have low light vision, they don't have the unburdened advantage of dwarves, then maybe there's some justification for this. What I will say is that it's an interesting mechanism to pull the center of gravity of the sort of characters that are in play back towards the fantasy standard is that the best choice is the middle of the road. There are more humans in the game's fiction and the game's world, perhaps because the power level of choosing a human is so significant. And the third first order optimal strategy, or foo, is a background. We're going to step inside the thought bubble now and start looking at all the backgrounds of Pathfinder 2, but we're going to single this one out and talk about how it's kind of head and shoulders above a lot of the stuff out there. And maybe that's good for the fiction of the game because it is such a common fantasy hero type. But I'll let you decide once we get inside. Grab a beverage. I'm the Complex Games Apologist. And today we're analyzing backgrounds and 
boos. When it comes to backgrounds, they've got a very uniform structure. You get a boost to one of two ability scores, and you get a second separate boost to any ability score of your choice. They all give you training in one lore skill, which are downtime skills not unlike profession from previous editions of 3.x. So the real variation among backgrounds comes from what skill feat each background unlocks. So which of the backgrounds is guilty as charged a foo? And for my part, I think the answer is farmhand. When you become a farmhand, you get the assurance skill feat with athletics. Now, I will be the first to say that Assurance is a little bit weak T. Getting a 10 by choosing to not roll is certainly not great. And how many DCs do you face that are a 10 that the GM also makes you roll for? After all, I would say in my opinion that the take 10 rule was in a lot of ways a guideline for the Game Master about when to not force rolls from players. With that in mind, I think Assurance will probably get a revision before Pathfinder 2 leaves beta, cause it's weak T. So why, in spite of that, do I think that Farmhand and the associated class feat of Assurance in Athletics is a foo compared to everything else in Backgrounds? And the answer is because this is everything that's associated with athletics. Swimming, grappling, forcing open doors. While Assurance in its weak T stage right now is not going to get a whole lot of mileage out of the 10, the very moment that you realize expert proficiency in athletics, this background and this feat really start doing work for you. Now it may be that there's just the barest thread of balancing material in the lore skills, because farming lore is maybe harder to insinuate into a downtime use that also advances the heroic trajectory of your character. In other words, there are very few hero farmers that remain farmers and stay at their profession even as they become more heroic. So I think it's all well and good that there might be more farmhands as player characters in Pathfinder 2, and that might help the stories of Pathfinder 2 feel a little bit more believable. But I think there is a peril to verisimilitude, not in farmhand, but in looking at other backgrounds compared to it. Let's take a look at Sailor. Now, I don't have a whole lot against Underwater Marauder as a feat. I think it's kind of interesting. It seems fun. I do wonder how many sailors actually have trained in fighting underwater, and I think that that might be a little bit more specific. Let's consider for a moment how a character with the sailor background is not sure they're going to be able to make a basic swim check, whereas the farmhand is sure. That seems a little bit out of place and hard to believe. Another side to this is take a look at the barkeep background's hobnother skill feat. It's interesting, but it's also a deep edge case. Extra uses of gather information during downtime days. That's an exceedingly specific kind of bonus to get from a feat that will pretty much very rarely come in handy versus something which could come in handy during almost every dungeon and nearly every combat. So I think in the fiction of the game world that the other backgrounds that aren't farmhand have to answer to how farmhand sort of outcompetes it at their own game. Likewise with the other skill feats, how are they as good as or better than assurance in their very specific area, whereas assurance in athletics is so general and so easily used? That's that peril with foo strategies, that hard work needs to pay, and that the specific needs to at least be more powerful within its bailiwick than the general. So what do you think about farmhand and the quandary of the other skill feats and the other backgrounds? Do you think that this is things working as intended to get more farmhands walking the fields of Galarian? Do you think that maybe these things could use another pass for verisimilitude and balance and tweaking? I think maybe. Let's take a look at another place where I think things are made a little too specific. And this is with the backgrounds themselves. It's the scout and the hunter backgrounds, which are somehow separate. The skill feats that they grant are survey wildlife and forager. 
and I'm not really sure which of those feats is better associated with the other, and I'm not really sure what the difference between those two backgrounds are, really, as far as who this guy was before he showed up and became an adventurer. Seems like these backgrounds and their skill feats could use a merger, because after all, Survey Wildlife seems like it has a lot to do with the same sort of game fiction activities that Forager is engaged with. Now, I know that backgrounds might seem like a backwater of the game, but this is, after all, the world that is encoded in the game's rules that we're talking about, and I think it's worth making that world come through clearly. The rules are the lens that we see it through in some ways, after all. So as one more argument for my case, I'm going to throw out a little bit of a wild speculation about the laborer background and its associated feat. This is a guess here, but I'm pretty sure that this recovery feat that's associated with Laborer is not the one that they meant to associate with it, because there's another one in the book that has recovery in the feat title, but is much more about a guy that gets knocked down, takes a licking, and keeps on ticking, as opposed to a guy that's able to really tough through illnesses and has a cast iron stomach. That's not to say that the man whose collar is blue isn't more than able to tough through an illness, but let's think about how recovering hit points fits with that background so much the better. I'm really enjoying backgrounds both as a part of the character creation mechanic for Pathfinder 2 and just as a little cool idea in this game. And that's why I'd like to see it tuned up a little bit more and why I think that the problem of believability and verisimilitude is really important to solve. I think that foos in Pathfinder 2 are welcome, but we have to be wary of how they can affect the game world and our ability to view it through the lens of the rules. What are your thoughts on this topic, and what are some topics that you'd like to see me cover? I'm the Complex Games Apologist. I'm hoping that you're having a great gaming autumn.